Okay, so hopefully then at this point, you're relatively happy with opening images, creating projects, adding images to your project, and then switching between them. So what I'd like us now to do is to start moving along the toolbar from left to right and meet at least some of the tools up here and to see what they do. So the first one in the top left, that looks like a little ruler. Um, if I leave my mouse over it, it tells me what it is it, or what it does, which in this case is show analysis panel, which is really just this window over at the left. So normally I would leave it turned on. The next one is the move tool and that's activated by default. And that's the reason that if I click on the image and I drag, then that will change the field of view. And that's what really allows me to navigate within the image easily. If I choose the next one, the rectangle tool, then if I click and drag, I'm no longer moving around the image, but rather I'm creating a rectangle as I do it. And one thing to notice is that after I've drawn the rectangle, QPath will automatically bring me back to activate the move tool. And the reason for that is initially, whenever it didn't do that, I was accidentally drawing rectangles whenever I just wanted to navigate around the image again. I found it less annoying that QPath would take me back to the move tool as opposed to keeping the rectangle tool open. As in saying that, if I jump briefly to the other end of the end of the toolbar, there is this little cog where you can choose the preferences and there I can type in move and I can actually turn on or off that option. I can also do lots of other customizations in here. So for example, I said that you could scroll in and out um, by using the scroll wheel. If you feel that the direction moves opposite to what you'd expect, there's an invert scrolling option in here. So there's lots of possible customizations that you can make if you don't like the behavior and they're accessible through this cog button. You can also view them in different ways. And so I can either search at the top for what I might want to change, or I can click on the button beside and then this will give me a more organized visualization of the different options that are available to me. Okay, but going back here then, so I've created my rectangle, I'm back on the move tool and as we've seen before, I can click and drag to move around the image. But the other concept of move is that I can click and drag inside the rectangle to move it as well. And so if I'm outside the rectangle, I'm moving around the image. If I'm inside the rectangle, I'm moving the rectangle itself. And you can see the rectangle it's, is shown in yellow to indicate that it's selected. So that's gonna be important later. The other thing that we can do here is that I can click on one of the little square handles at the corner, and then I can adjust the rectangle that way. And an additional trick that might be useful is if you wanted to make a perfect square, you can hold down the shift key and that will constrain the size as you do it. And that happens when you're drawing or whenever you're using the move tool to adjust the handles later. Okay. So I'll leave the rectangle there for a moment, move to the next tool, which is the ellipse tool. It's the same idea. I click and drag and you can see that now the ellipse has turned yellow to indicate it's selected. The rectangle is turned red to indicate that it's not selected. And if I press, if I use the move command again, I can move the ellipse. But if I click inside the rectangle, it doesn't move anymore because it's not the selected object. If I want to select it with the move tool, I can just double click inside. And that will allow me to switch which one is selected. Inevitably, you're going to create annotations by accident that you want to get rid of. The way you can do that is just by pressing the backspace key. So I will select the, the annotation I don't want, press backspace, and then it will delete. I'll also click on this annotations tab so that you can see that as I draw new annotations, they're added in there and that gives me another way in which I can delete them. Just by clicking this list or I can click delete all to remove them all. And before we go too far here, I would also like to point out that these tools are replicated in the tools menu where it will also show you what the shortcut key is. So realistically, I would not click on this rectangle button very often. I would press R for rectangle. I would press O for ellipse, where O oh, which is the circular shape. L for line, which is going to be the next tool, P for polygon, B for brush and so on. So there are these shortcuts that are really well worth memorizing if you're going to be annotating a lot of QPath. So the next one then, L for line, I can draw a line, this will give me measurements. 
because I have the annotation tab active, I can also see the length of the line here in microns at the bottom, which is based upon what we've seen in here in the image tab, the pixel width and height in microns. If that information was missing, we would only be able to get the line length in terms of pixels. Press backspace to delete it again. Moving on then, the polygon tool, the shortcut key was P. And this allows me to click individual points or click and drag, depending upon how detailed I want to be. And then double click for the last point and that gives the polygon. And then I can click on points and move them if necessary. And so that's an advantage. If I do lots of individual clicks that are well spaced out, then it's easier to modify the shape afterwards. If I click and drag, then I get too many of these little handles and the modification is not so easy.